Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on securely transfer files between systems. Right, before we can do that, um, you need to have two VMs and have them on the same network to be able to do the transfer. Both VMs will have to have a, a Linux based um, operating system and obviously you've got the Red Hat uh, 8 VM already but uh, you can always create another one or or what I've done is just cloned the existing um, Red Hat VM just given a new MAC address and um, we're away pretty much so I'll just show you what I've done within VMware so within uh, VirtualBox so you, I've just done a a clone so you have to have the, the VM down just do a clone and allow it to allow it clone to clone the VM um, it's pretty straightforward there. And then once you've got them cloned, you need to make sure they're in the same network. So if you go to File, and then to Preferences, and then to Network, you'll need to create a, a NAT network. So if you click the plus, which will add a new one. And then once you've added the new one, click the uh, cog to edit. And then you've got all the uh, network values. You can set the uh, what size of your network, etc. Uh, the name, if you want to. And then you can also set up port, port forwarding and stuff like that. I've talked about that in previous videos as well. So I've, I've pretty much just done that so far. And then in each VM, you want to be able to talk to each other. You need to go to network and then NAT network and then select the same uh, NAT network you created just now. And you have to do it for both VMs. Okay. So then, if you do an IP address or ADR in the cloned one, I've got 10.0.2.6. In the original one, I have 10.0.2.6. So what I'll do is I'll make this small so I know which one <laughs> which one's which. It's always fun. So if I do, just full screen this one. Cool. Right, so let's first find a file to transfer. Um I think we should have some left over from one of my videos. So let's just go to documents. Okay, so we just use that file six at the very top there. So the command is SCP or secure uh, copy, and then the file name, and then where to. So we've got first specified user. We're going to on the remote system. So I use the same user. It can be any user that's uh, configured on the system. Then the IP address, or it can be FQDN of the of the host. In this case, we'll use IP because we've only got IP address. IP address working. That was 2.6, I believe. Then the colon, and then the file name it wants to be created. So by doing this, it's going to go onto this server, and we create this file six within this user's um, uh, local directory. That's because we're not specifying the full path here. So if we just do this, we'll be in and ask for the password of the user on the remote system and then it will transfer the file. And if it's a large file, of course, you'll get some kind of um, progress as it goes along. But my file, yes, yeah, very, very small and you can see that's transferred pretty quickly. So I'll just go and confirm it's there and go to the clone and I should be in the yep home directory of the user and that's pwd for print working directory and yep we just got the new file here just just created just now great so we go back to the original for, uh, one now so now we can do let's do a bit more with scp so we can transfer um, a directory if we wanted to. So let's do, for example, let's just do the SSH directory. So 
So I'll have to sudo first, because this is a directory I may not have access to every file inside. So then we do scp, etc., ssh, slash, star. So that means I want to transfer in the ssh directory all the files in there. And then where we're going to transfer it to, we can select the same user again, or let's say the root user, and then the host name again, or IP address. And then, we, in this case, I'm going to specify location. So forward slash TMP, or the temp directory. That's a special directory, actually, in, um, in the next, so this is a... Um, Temporary in the fact that if you reboot the uh, virtual machine or, or host, um, any any of the contents will actually be lost automatically. So it's quite good to, for uh, to, for temporary storage. But you just got to watch out if you've got anything in there that you want to persist after reboot, you're going to lose it if it's in temp. So we've got a uh, authentication prompt uh, just to say. Be warned, uh, we, I haven't seen this host before. Uh, are you sure you want to connect to this? So in this case, I know what's there, so I'm going to say yes. Then I've got to put in root user's password. And you can see it's copied over any regular files is the way to put it. So these are all regular files. This is actually uh, a daemon, so it's obviously not going to copy that across because it's, probably, it's running at the time. But you can see all the all the other files are copied quite nicely, and you can see the speed it's been copied at, uh, how much time it took, uh, was it how much it actually got uh, copied over, and and the sizes and that sort of thing. Okay, so let's go back to the clone, and if we go to here, cd temp, and to do an ls in here. We can see at the very bottom here all the files have just been copied, and as you may have noticed, also they were all owned by root. So if I transferred it as uh, the C England user, it would actually tra uh, it would transfer it slightly differently, and obviously it would be owned by C England user instead. Okay, we also can do the opposite, so we can actually go and get a file from the remote system. So we just got to switch around the SCP commands. Um, so let's just create a file here to to get first. And in fact, we could just use one of these. Um, okay, I will just use the ssh underscore config file here. Okay. So I will I'll put that into my temp directory. So if we go into temp now and just do an ls to see what's there, there's no that ssh file is not currently there. Great. So I'll just do a clear to keep this nice and clean. Okay, so we just do SCP and then first specify the remote host. So let's go here because we have to do it as root because otherwise the current user does not have access to that file. And then temp sshd underscore config is the file we're targeting. And because it's go into this directory and right now we can choose the dot. That's just to say put it into this current directory. Put the password in again and you can see that file is transferred quickly and PRA and we just do and there it is. Great. So yeah you can also do stuff like uh, if you wanted to rename it we could have it SSH uh, D underscore config from uh, 10 uh, 0 to 6 and do the same command again and you can see the transfer over there and now if we do we now got that additional file so you can also do renaming as part of that as well and obviously if I wanted to, I can redirect that to another directory. So I could just do it to home, uh, C England. Again, put the password in. 
it's transferred there. And if I just do the tilde CD, oh, I can't do tilde because I'm logged in as root at the moment, so I just go home, go in England. But otherwise, if you're logged in as that current user, you can use the tilde to just go straight to your directory. Oh, it's not going in England, it's C England. Cool. And if I just do an ls in here, I should see that file there. Okay, that pretty much covers it. Um, so really, it was all about this SCP command. Again, the usual stuff. You can use the man page to read a bit more information, but it's yeah, it's pretty sh it's pretty straightforward to use. It's we I use it heavily. Um, it's the, it's the best way to get files between two hosts quickly um, and pretty painlessly. Uh, yeah, um, it's certainly a good one to learn. And obviously it's in the exam as well. Uh, yeah, that that concludes it. Um, I've popped my Patreon information on the on the page now uh, on the screen now. I've just um, so any any donations are uh, much appreciated. Uh, I'm trying to do um, pre put videos there for a few days before, so you you certainly get uh, early access via Patreon if you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, we've also got some other perks around um, being able to download the videos. So once I've got a complete, so I've got complete two complete playlists now as part of the um, RHCSA exam as objectives. So that's the uh, understanding user central tools and operating running, running systems. Um, those two playlists, um, if you join my Patreon, uh, you can actually download those completely offline and I'll, I'll send you the details for that. So anyway, yeah, um, again, thank you for watching my videos. Um, it's much appreciated. Uh, I hope they've been helpful. Any questions or whatever, just pop them in the comments below. I'll try and answer them. Uh, yeah, well, thanks again and I'll catch you next video. Thank you.